was found dead in a house in Navan on Saturday night. Our chief reporter Barry White has more from Navan District Court. 37-year-old Sandra Sanderit, with an address at Academy Street in Navan, was brought before Navan District Court this evening. Zvigneb Shek was killed at the property on Academy Street on Saturday night. Detective Sergeant Raymond Smith gave evidence of arrest, charge and caution. He told the court that Miss Sanderit, who is originally from Lithuania, was arrested following the incident and brought to Kells Garda Station. She made no reply when charged with murder. The accused was remanded in custody and will appear before Trim District Court via video link on Thursday. Coalition leaders are meeting this evening to discuss Saturday's coming cabinet reshuffle. The discussions are expected to continue until the end of the week with party leaders playing their cards close to their chests. Taoiseach Michal Martin has yet to reveal which government department he wants to take over. He's also dismissed questions about his future, denying he's giving consideration for running for president. I haven't given that any consideration uh, whatsoever. Uh, my focus is very much in terms of uh, Doyle Erden and in terms of, of, of national politics. Uh, that's where I've always been uh, and that's where uh, I will continue to, to maintain my focus on. And now you're up to date. It's two minutes past seven. News Talk Weather. Thanks to Ryanair. Need a last minute gift? Ryanair gift cards. Delivered straight to your inbox. Remaining very cold tonight, especially in northern counties. Patches of freezing fog will affect the northern half of the country with very hazardous driving conditions. Lowest temperatures will range from minus 6 to 0 degrees. Dry in most areas with just isolated wintry showers. A widespread sharp to severe frost with icy conditions will form across most parts of the country. And now you're up to date. More in an hour. The News Round on Off The Ball. With Gillette, in association with Movember. Effortless shave, magnificent mo. This is News Talk. Welcome along. Really good show on the way. Opening weekend of the Champions Cup, we will discuss with Rory O'Connor of the Irish Independent and Grand Slam winner Fiona Hayes. That's on the way after 8 o'clock. Very exciting news this hour. Kevin Kilban checks in from Doha on an extraordinary uh, four quarterfinals you would have to say 53106 the text number we are at off the ball on Twitter Richie McCormick is back with us welcome back hello hey Joe you well very well and exciting news people Kenny Cunningham in studio no more exciting than the previous name you just mentioned (laughs) All right, Rich fake round of applause was meant to (laughs) <laughs> didn't happen nothing that's shocking absolutely Poor nothing Kenny. Kenny no thinking give me your answers are you ready mastermind pretty much your specialised chosen subject the World Cup <laughs> what would be happen- your specialised subject Kenny unless it happened Richie in the previous 24 <laughs> to 48 hours forget it because the rest of it's mush in the match between mush. Ecuador and Qatar no Oh God! <laughs> so yeah, that does feel that like does a long seem time ago. like wow. Twentieth of November. It has look. There are many, many, many problems with this World Cup, which we acknowledge for a moment. On the other hand, we were just chatting off air. Yeah, it has been a nice bridge, almost akin to a kind of a sun lamp, uh, to get us from the twentieth of November through a fairly miserable few weeks of weather, and suddenly Christmas is here. It has been a little burst of something oh, on our so. wintry TV screens, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know what rich feels. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in speaking to people because you. you you get a sense of it. Kind of, went, kind of stumbled into the World Cup almost, didn't we? It was honest before. I remember getting questioned, Rich, about like five days before. Yeah. Who'd you fancy to win it? And I, I couldn't give an answer because I hadn't even thought about it. Your headspace wasn't there. Yeah, I hadn't even I thought was, about. I, I hadn't watched any of the squads. I was thinking Brazil. I couldn't have named your four Brazilian players in the squad. No, at the time yeah. <laughs> we were just coming off the back of yeah. the Premiership Champions League, so I kind of hit us that quickly, but. Yeah. yeah, I've got to be honest with you. Yeah, it's been a nice buzz the last uh, month. A lot of talk about the timing of the tournament, but I think it's worked for me. I got that feeling early on, Rich. I don't know about you. The yeah. game's coming thick and fast. A bit kind of helter, skelter. You know what I mean? It was a bit manic, but at the same time, hugely enjoyable. Yeah, I think that period of having four games a day, <clears throat> uh, you either settled into enjoying the World Cup or you didn't. That was going to be your real tester. And I think a lot of people who were you know, obviously wanting to enjoy the football were in and mm. those questions of, of morality and all that were not necessarily set aside, but they were put to the back of minds for a time. My my view on the whole thing has been utterly skewed by the last week, uh, to be honest with you, because I've watched Morocco's progress through the tournament in Morocco, which has just been 
the most rewarding and amazing and fantastic experience to watch how that is playing out in that country and be amongst the celebrations and all that kind of jazz and the environment and the what you've been in Morocco and, you've been I've in been Morocco in, I've, been in, I've been in Agadir Kenny of all places oh, see, is that, was that coincidence or pure really? coincidence yeah pure wow. coincidence yeah because we were just saying I think the week before when the you know those final round of group games and everything in their group seemed to be up in the air I was going ah, it'd be nice if they got through because I'm over there and it'd be grand to see what it was like <laughs> I was not prepared whatsoever for the quarter, for the second round and the quarter final and the celebrations. Um, Do you get it, Ken it, Rich? Just... You're old enough. Do you get it? Yeah. I've heard, I've heard somebody mention the last couple of days uh, Morocco at the moment, the streets mm. over there, akin to Ireland in the early 90s, that kind of groundswell, you know, everything being new and fresh. Bigger. Bigger. Bigger scale. Because, yeah. Obviously. Yeah, because you, fa- you factor it's bigger scale, first of all, but we also factor in that Morocco been in like umpteen World Cups. Like we had that first in 1990, and I'm not saying by 94 it was tired, but I think we knew the territory. Mm. Um, whereas this and the progress of Morocco and the way that they've gone about it and uh, the fact that they're galvanized under uh, their manager and they've got players dotted all over Europe, uh, this feels like it's something new while also something that they're familiar with. There's no expectations on the squad whatsoever, despite the fact that they've got a number of talented players within it. And again, the scale is just off the chain. After watching the matches and after being part of the celebrations, I went back and was, we'd be flicking through um, the different Moroccan channels. And most of them, obviously, because BN Sports have the exclusive rights over there, um, all the Moroccan channels will be showing reaction from the different cities, be it Casablanca or Rabat or yeah. Marrakesh or wherever. And it's just, like, the scale of it is huge. Like, yeah. streets are absolutely packed and it goes on for hours. And this is all without drink, we might add yeah. as well. Uh, and then they show clips from, there was a new show that had a clip from, um, there was this big giant, basically like a, a big metal uh, barn. It was like a almost indoor stadium in Palestine where they were watching it there and it was being greeted as if it was in Marrakesh. And then they're out in the streets of, Ram- of Ramallah in, in Palestine. And yeah. again, it's being celebrated as if it's part of, you know, Rabat. It, it, the whole Arabic world has taken this on board and it is huge, utterly, utterly huge. And it was so such an honor to kind of be in amongst it for yeah. a couple of days like we were because I thought, like, I've never seen anything like it and I doubt it will again. Rich, do you think it, they come into the conversation now in terms of the 2030 uh, World Cup now? Amazingly, like, wouldn't, wouldn't it have been on the agenda three weeks ago before this tournament if you were talking about the World Cup in 2030, 26 in North America, a lot of talk potentially to take it back to Africa or their Middle East in 2030. I mean, Morocco wouldn't even have been in the discussion, Joe, would they? Three weeks ago, you wouldn't have thought, well, I certainly wouldn't have, would have couldn't have even had the conversation, which I would have thought, Morocco, really? Infrastructure? Mm. You know, football and tradition, the whole thing? And now all of a sudden you're looking at it, even those um, town, uh, cities which Rich mentioned, Marrakesh, Casablanca, even listening to it, you think, oh, yeah, fancy a bit of that. Mm. You think, Rich? Yeah, um, it's it's phenomenal. I really realised I was just talking away to myself there for a minute. Um, but, but is it yeah, doable? Like, is it doable? Can they could they take it on, Rich? Could, could you they? See it? You've had a you've had a taste of yeah. it. I know it's an easy thing to throw at you, like you know what I'm, I mean. But it's it'd be an infrastructure thing more than nothing else. Yeah. I know they've bid it on on several of the last major tournaments, um, uh, in terms of World Cups and that, uh, and they have kind of put out feasibility studies, but haven't been there. Like it would be a, a, an infrastructure thing because. As, uh, like this Qatar thing has completely skewed the curve for everybody because they've got the finances and have had the finances yeah. to do anything they wanted in terms of infrastructure. And similarly, Canada, the United States, and Mexico will be in a you know pretty similar yeah. boat in four years' time. So that that's that's where the curve is now. Uh, it's places that really have everything good to go and good to go right now. I don't think they want another development World Cup. And if they do, it's going to be somewhere like Saudi Arabia, where again, they can just pour oodle the cash in it and do whatever they want and, and run roughshod over their own country to in an effort to stage this thing. Uh, that's the that's the damage I think ultimately the Qatar has done is that it's made it more difficult for places like Morocco or places that might be developing in a football sense and in a, a political sense and geopolitical sense. It's made it more difficult for them to, to host it in the future. Mm. Back to your quick fire questions, Kenny. <laughs> that was far more interesting speaking to Rich. We had boots on the ground there. In we Morocco. sent him over. I mean, off the boat, put him on the ground there. You know, <laughs> the, the, no expense spared here. The resources are That's off amazing. the charts. I've, I've, I've put, I'm reminded me to put my expenses thing through <laughs> then tonight, Joe. Yeah, email it to me. Yeah, I will. Yeah. So, don't think, just answer. 
Goal, like the goal, goal of the tournament for Kenny Cunino. Goal of, oh my God. It's the I, free kick. No, Dutch no. Dutch free kick that you wrongly thought was improvised. Can't even think. Can't even think. Goal. No, it's hard. I, I couldn't think. Of that. I, I wrote this during the news and I thought, well, I can't even think what the goal of the tournament is. What, has there been a standout in terms of, um, oh, I don't even put the Richarlison goal in there, which a lot of people would, I suppose. No, the other, just because of that first touch of his, but it got away from him, didn't it? He tried to trap it and it popped up in the air and then his but the recovery, in, the recovery, recovery was, was up. But I can't, get, so I can't get, no, I can't get past that first <laughs> okay, touch. Okay, fair enough. So I've got to, I've got to reel that <laughs> one out. Honourable mention. You've got to throw a few goals at me. I, I find it hard to think. I thought this Neymar, is what I'm talking Neymar's about. was spectacular, but that's pure recency bias. Rich? Goal? Oh, there was a couple of good ones in that Spain 7-0 against Costa Rica, but again, does that count? Oh, no, I don't, I don't uh, think. Because that's, yeah. It has to have import as well. Yeah, even the knockout games, even limited to the last couple of knockout games that we've seen in terms of... Someone mentions Mexico free kick here. Can't ah, remember it. Mexico free kick? Free kick, no. Oh, I, no, it needs to be from play. I don't think there has been too many spectacular... Has there been two or three actually blowing your... You know, blowing you away. I don't think so. Oh, a booba car for Cam- for Cameroon. Oh, the dink, the little dink chip, finished. The little dink, yeah, dink finished. Yeah, yeah, that was tasty. almost ruined because he thought he was offside. But like, it's a it's a remarkable. <laughs> but then goal. the argument did he think he, he would was offside? Never ever he... have tried that finish. <laughs> oh, if he there you he go. Was there never. you go. I'm struggling. I don't know. Mbappe hasn't scored anything that would blow your head off, but they've all been quality. <laughs> Can't take much England. Ing, let's go. Too many I mean? strike was decent, but it's not a goal of the oh, tournament. Oh no, nowhere near. Hasn't been that kind of Josie Mar moment, is that for Brazil in '86? Was it against Northern Ireland? Do you remember that one, Joe? Yeah. Twenty-five yards. He scored Rich? two. He scored two. He scored two in '86. The first one that was it. Yeah, it was against the North. It was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it was against Morocco. Actually, it was the next one they scored. It was great. Got another set of um, questions here. These are meant to be quick fire. <laughs> Guy, let's let, let's move on to the next one. We We're can't even think on of one goal. One. Can't think of one goal. <laughs> I thought of one and then I just cut, cut it down straight, cut the legs out from underneath the straight away to Charleston overhead. I think Neymar's against Croatia is up there. Yeah, I only saw bits of the goal. I saw the goal. goal. Oh, I don't know about Joe, that's a stretch, stunningly. For combination. the moment. For the moment. For oh, the moment. The mo- oh, I think you'd factor that in too much. I mean, the moment, then you might as well just pick a goal that won the World Cup, no matter if it's as scruffy as because. That's true. It's undercut by the fact that they didn't get through, for sure. If it had been a 90 <laughs> second minute winner, it might have. Gone up a notch or two. Okay, so I'd go as far as to no say goals. it's been a World Cup without one spectacular goal so far. As good as it's you. been. I think you're right. I think Unless po- somebody as proves me wrong. Someone text Unless in. somebody proves me wrong. Five three one oh six. Uh Kenny Cunningham's defender of the tournament. We're gonna have to up the pace here. Defender of the tournament. Jesus <laughs> Mary and Joseph. Well, I'd uh, up until er, def- early on the partnership, no, I'd I like Agard and Saiz. I remember did a package for them for uh, on one of the games just in saying because for me like centre it's always about partnerships for me and them two you could actually pick them apart size in particular in terms of individual equality what he's lacking but as a, a partnership just kind of opposites attract to- totally the opposite in terms of playing styles but really function uh, together well we're not going to see him again in the tournament so he's just like <laughs> he's like stretch it off a guard was stretched off in the game previously I'm not sure we're going to yeah. see them together again but I really enjoyed uh, those two midfielder of the tournament Luca Modric. Ah, Kenny. You know what? I haven't Rabat. seen too much. I haven't seen too oh, much of the equations. It's as simple as that. I haven't seen too much of them. It's too obvious, Joe. You gotta think out of the box. Sometimes no, I'm gonna no, right I'll tell you I'm gonna throw in. Just been speaking about a brief, you you threw in uh, Amrabat, didn't you, from Morocco? Yeah. yeah. And I said, no, Uahe, who's playing with him. He's playing left side of the three in midfield for Morocco. He's like twenty one years of age. He's playing French football. Angers or Angers or Angela how you pronounce Ange- it. Angers. On, oh, there you go. Angers, Angers. B1 honours French, Kenny. He's bowled me away. He's absolutely bowled me over. He's been great, that young flit. It's Modric, but anyway, this is, these are your answers. It's Anrabat. Yeah. He's Uwahe. been exceptional. Uwahe. He's exceptional. He sounds Hawaiian, but he's not. He's Moroccan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, that's getting clipped. <laughs> Striker of the tournament. Oh, Jesus, Joe. This is it. Got to keep coming with these, are you? Well, there's only three. Left back of the tournament, <laughs> let me guess. Right side of midfield of the tournament. I wrote this during the news. I had nothing because we've already Exciting. talked on the football Sounds show. Sounds like it. We've Sounds already, we've like already it. discussed things at length. There's an hour of me and Kenny talking about the World Cup. This is, this is the fumes. 
striker of the uh, the tournament. Come on, <laughs> come on. She, I'm struggling. She not give it to Giroud. I take. It's got to be better than Giroud. Don't get me wrong. He turns up when you need him. Well, are we throwing Mbappe? Are you counting him as a striker? Oh, no, no, I don't. No, I don't think he can. He got to go central. You thought my number nine there, really? Okay, what's aren't your, you? Okay, rather than a forward, broaden it out. It might be a bit easier. I meant number broaden nine. Broaden it out. I meant For, number nine to be forward. <laughs> forward thinking flair. <laughs> That's most fullbacks. You could argue most fullbacks in the modern <laughs> game and throw them into that as so, well. There hasn't been a great goal. There hasn't been a great striker. Yeah, no, we're all going. Me. We're going big on the on the World Cup, but like we're struggling to get any pick out pick out moments or even individual performances. Mm. Uh, wingers, just try, try a few teams at me. <laughs> Uh, apparently this ad works on who the played World Cup who, who played in the World Cup Jeez, I, don't, I don't know no one striker <laughs> there's no strikers left who's is that, that what you're telling me who's left in it who's left in it Argentina Giroud. Messi's not uh, Alvarez forget it Croatia like Kramaric is up there we're not going to talk him oh, up Harry Kane Giroud's no. like you got to do better than Per Giroud much more that's, 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 that's Giroud and then Aaron City from Morocco I'm thinking of the four teams still left in it we're struggling we're struggling a bit, aren't we? A little bit. It would appear so. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. And it was all building up to this, Richie. Oh, no. Richie, it was all building up to this. Go on. Come and on, we on. insist on an answer, do we not, Richie? Within within five to ten seconds, Kenny, if you can do it. Yeah. Do you know, generally I say to you, don't yeah, tell me comes. anything. I don't want to know any questions. I don't want to know anything that you're doing. No prep whatsoever. Yes. I might have to revise that after this. Well, this is the last of the show. You can rescue it here. Favourite RTE presenter. Oh, don't answer that. Don't. I was joking. Oh. He's actually thinking, don't answer that. That's not fair. You can't pick favourites. Oh, I suppose you... You don't. You'll have to see these people you again. You'll have to be... You'll be in the office tomorrow and they'll be like, thanks for nothing, Kenny. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose, it's, I suppose it's true, isn't it? <laughs> you pick, you p- pick one out and you upset everybody else and... You definitely should do. should be that sensitive. I don't think you should be... I should be that sensitive, should you? Who have you enjoyed? The correct answer here, Kenny, by the way, is Joe Malloy when he gets the Sunday game. Present company excluded. excluded. I was complimenting you on the uh, football show. I don't excluded. Know if you saw, I don't know. Excluded, I just said. I don't know if you saw it, Richie, but Kenny was on the other night in a very nice navy blue oh, yeah. number. His posture was absolutely exceptional. Was he was fascinated at this. He, he, he was fascinated at this. It was side view. And it's, it's yeah. rare you see good posture on television. Old old honestly, yeah. he was just... Like Diddy Kenny, Man is sliding slouch. off the couch. Yeah. Do you wear one of those posture correctors, Kenny? You know, one of those things is like <laughs> a vest. It's like he's got some medical advice, Rich. It. Rich, it's on medical advice. Yeah. I've had to, I've had to do. Yeah. Okay. I was distracted. Lower back, lower back related issues at present. There's loads of you with that. Kilban has the same thing. Yeah, a lot of doesn't footballers. Kilban's always issues. giving out about his lower back. Yeah. I, I was genuinely distracted from the conversation by your posture. A conversation <laughs> broke out in our living room. Look at your man's that posture. Was, it's not much of a compliment, Joe, really. <laughs> I mean, it's damning. Off the, back of the, <laughs> off the back of an extensive World Cup campaign, all you can talk about is me posture. <laughs> it, was your, it was your finest contribution on television, I thought. Because I haven't watched, have you watched any of this stuff abroad in the UK? I mean, I haven't watched, that, I haven't watched yeah, any of it. I, I don't divide yeah. TV, but I've watched a lot of BBC. Any, any decent value or... I mean, I'd never even think of switching on. Would you, Rich, uh, popping over? Kenny, like, Kenny, Kenny. What, what people really want to know here is what's Joey and Doe like to work alongside? I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a good yeah. fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's different, Rich, isn't it? I don't I mean, yeah. you must get a bit. I was on there the, a couple of mornings on the spin. You think people must be getting it. Oh, f- not hear me. Oh, here we go. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, they were. Cunningham Roach. <laughs> if, you, if you go on Twitter, Jeez. they were. If you go on morning, Twitter. Ireland, morning Ireland with Kenny Cunningham and Kevin Doyle. But yeah. So, yeah, I just think a di- different face, different voice. You know, freshens it up a little bit. Mm. And I think generally, you well, you'd be able to tell me. I think generally they've done it quite well in terms of rotation and you know the kind of people yeah. in there. I, I, well, what well, I've enjoyed, I, I've watched, I've enjoyed, and I've watched all the coverage over here with RT since I've predominantly been over. Here. I wouldn't think of funny, isn't it? Never, I'd never think about switching over to BBC or uh, ITV. It just wouldn't come into my head. Duffer's been good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. Brings a different dynamic, doesn't he? Yeah. You know, he's good, he's relevant, he's, you know, he's he's in the game at the moment, he's kind of, you know, so he's he's got all of that. You can see enthusiasm and yeah. you can you see that all season, like in terms of shells and stuff, so. and Gives an opinion. Yeah, definitely. It's so funny you say who on BBC has stood out. Because I've watched, I probably have, I'm being honest, I've watched a good bit of BBC. I don't have ITV. No one has really stood out in BBC as... 
had a great tournament. Yeah. Like they go in for a lot of like Argentina play and Zabaleta's on and it's, you know, kind of. Banter, oh, banter, who, banter. who are you tipping or what do you think about it? He's like, oh, I'm too nervous to talk. Everyone laughs. You know, kind of a. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's less hard analysis and it's more yeah, like gotcha. atmosphere. And they're at the stadium, so it's more that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, sure. Shearer has been on a lot. Oh, to be a bit more punchy, right? I'm guessing with yeah, Roy. Yeah, I, I, I have to say, I really, I would love to have had ITV for the month with Roy and Gary Neville, and you know, I just, I yeah, that, that's that carries good. a bit more without having seen it. You know what I mean? Carries yeah. a bit more punch. Those names that you've mentioned, especially for like an England game, you know. Yeah, good to have that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you there. We got to press on. The news round is brought to you with Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day. By the way, Chemical Bands join us live at half seven. Do you want to stay or go? How long have you been that. out there? How long has he been out there? Eight months. Three months. <laughs> How did he get away with that? I don't know. How did he, 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 he get a pass for that? He must be on the big books. Young kids. Are Unbelievable. You, do you want to hang around and, and talk to him or do you want to go and have a And I don't want to dominate the, the conversation. You would never. Just pass on me regards. <laughs> Just pass on me regards. Tell him I've heard a few stories about his behaviour out there. I won't repeat on radio either. Richie. Tell him he needs to tone it down a bit. We'll start the news <sighs> round. Really with, the reason uh, yeah, we'll press on. Rugby. So reaction from the weekend. Yeah, Jonathan Sexton and Tyke Furlong could make their European appearances, their first European appearances of the season. Uh, on Friday night, Leinster head coach Leo Cullen has confirmed they've stepped up their training loads following respective calf and ankle injuries that ruled them out of that spanking win over Rassing on Saturday. Leinster welcomed Gloucester to the ODS. That is on Friday night and is their second Pool A game in the Heineken Champions Cup. We'll hear from the Munster camp tomorrow as it relates to their body count after a five-point defeat to Toulouse in the fog at Thelma Park yesterday. Tries from Matty Lebel and Luca Tozan healthy five-time European champions to victory there. After the game, Munster's head coach Graham Rentree told our own Tommy Rooney that accuracy cost them dearly yesterday. We weren't great at being as accurate as they were when we were on their try line. Uh, we had opportunities uh, around our mall and we turned the ball over. That was a key moment. Uh, then we had a penalty against Gav Coombs at around 54 minutes when we were, we were challenging their breakdown. Then that puts us back. That was another key moment. There's been a nice feeling over the last couple of weeks, a bit of momentum building. You had a two wins back-to-back coming into this game. Um, I think the crowd was just shy of a, a sellout today in freezing conditions. Yeah. When the noise got going, it got going. How did you find it? You know, I was, was spoilt with the crowd. You, you can feel the crowd. I mean, it was challenging conditions for everyone, players and the crowd. Our momentum was still going. We're still going. We'll, we'll look at what we can do better and uh, we'll keep moving forward. Northampton away next week. What do you got to do in the next few days? Oh, we, we, we'll have a good look at what we can do better in terms of giving them access and a look at, a look at our penalty count as well. But we'll keep looking forward, being positive. I want us to keep building because I can see what we're doing. We're challenging teams with the ball in hand in particular and we'll look at how we can be more accurate when we get to their five metre line. Graham Rowntree there. We have Fiona Hayes and Roy O'Connor on the way after eight o'clock. Kenny's talking there about the Munster crowd who have a certain reputation. Best crowd... Of your go again. Here we go Come again. On. Best crowd? Yeah. Oh, anywhere? Atmosphere? No, no, no. Of the clubs you played for. Oh, the Week cl- in, week oh. out. You get a feel for them. You get a feel for them. Some a bit more quick to anger, perhaps. Yeah, Some a bit thing, more supportive. I spent most of my career at Wimbledon, didn't I? But that was a difficult one because we were rent and sell horse park and uh, 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 air core support was small, Joe, wasn't it? I mean, we were literally paying for it playing in front of half empty stadiums for most oh, of the it, it was small wasn't oh, it? it was small yeah 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 it was the core support was tiny you know right. what I mean so oh, they loved the club and, and all of that and it was great but yeah just couldn't just just in terms of numbers it was a struggle at times just to get numbers inside the stadium so what might you have got on a that reason well Millwall I suppose straight away uh, at the old den uh, before we moved to the new one the old den was absolutely amazing and were they quick to turn on the team uh, not overly no, same as most supporters I think in terms of you know if you're hurting your sleeve and putting it in in terms of energy application they they back you uh, to that extent but that old den of, it, of an evening under the floodlights was pretty mm. oof yeah you could you could sense that a little bit and obviously it was behind us you know what I mean but certainly opposition teams you felt and I talk about that kind of 12th man but yeah tight to the touchline you know what I mean so in terms of that kind of in, intimidation people say oh very intimidating place to go that was one of those old school grounds but great if you had the, like, uh, the short on your back yeah yeah really kind of helped what were Birmingham fans like yeah great were they yeah, yeah yeah but again that was small St Andrews wasn't a huge capacity at the time but yeah they yeah they really got the place rocking as well because we were doing okay this time we were up weren't we we were up in the Prem and 
for a couple of years. We kind of got it going a little bit, you know, we weren't playing great football and all that type of thing, but we were kind of, you know, competitive, you know what I mean? We were kind of punching away and all that type of thing. So, Could you um, pinpoint a club or two where you thought, oh, that's quite an educated football crowd. <laughs> it's often said about Anfield. And I do remember watching like a Newcastle game once and about 50,000 Geordies screamed man on to a player, you know? Well, I like St. James's Park. People said to me what ground I like going to probably was St. James's Park because you, you got to understand when Old Trafford and places like this in Liverpool, that I, when I pitched up there, wherever it was, Wimbledon or Birmingham, the game was over after <laughs> after 20 minutes. But the crowd were so nervous when you pitched up, were they? <laughs> so I was saying, so there wasn't that kind of, oh, you know what I mean? When in the game with 10 minutes ago, the whole place w- was up. That was yeah. just the, they were the harsh reality. I love it. But I always felt they went to St. James's, you know, win, when you're a win, lose or draw, it didn't matter. They were whoosh, they were up there. The atmosphere was amazing. I and, really enjoyed going there. And to my point, which is maybe a more specific one, about an educated fan base where you thought these guys really know. I can sense I'm not sure about that, Joe. I'm just an asking. Educated what? Lads sitting in the stands were like monocles in their in their <laughs> smoking smoking pipes. Sometimes you can get a sense if a crowd have a good oh, understanding. Oh come game. on, I'm not I'm not sure. I suppose Liverpool. I mean, oh, that's a stretch, Joe, isn't it? Roy Keane said it of Liverpool. Yeah, I, I think so. I think the, the Anfield crowd there's an appreciation there of oof, yeah, this is a good team here, and yeah, show a bit of respect. That is that is that what Roy's talking about? So, Maybe yeah, they, they could they, they could. cheer they they get behind the Liverpool team, but if they recognise woof. This is a proper team we're playing against there. There's a bit of a... Yeah, I like that, actually, I must admit. And like certain... certain like, they might respond to a, a a cultured pass, which might necessarily be a goal. Like, they can just, you know, can yeah. ap- appreciate the finer points of the game kind of a crowd. Yeah. No, no, no. You know, I, I, I think that's a good thing. I don't think there's enough of that in the game, actually. So what I'm saying is, you get the ball, you trap it, you beat your man. Yeah. Outside of the boot, 30, 40 yarder for Wimbledon. And you'd get a round of applause from Anfield. Yeah, you're not going to get it's not. Yeah, it's, that's not how it's going to manifest itself. You're not going to get a round of applause. But I think at the end of the game, towards the end of the game, you get a bit of a sense. And I think at Anfield, your opposition teams have been almost clapped off, or individual players have put in a performance or something. Because Ronaldo or got there's that. There's always an opportunity Man for United. them. There's a moment in the game where they have an opportunity maybe to show a bit, and they do. Okay. So yeah, I think that yeah, I I do like to see it. I think that's a bit of class. That shows a bit of class. Yeah. And there's not enough of that. You know, the game's like so tribal and. You know, let's just hammer them and keep handing them type yeah. thing. I think that's, you know what I mean? It's grim. Yeah, it is a little bit grim, yeah. So I think you're right. No, you're right. Probably in that respect, yeah, maybe. The, uh, generally speaking, yeah, probably the Liverpool crowd is a fair example. Okay, interesting. We got there in the end. <laughs> Thanks for making that so easy for yeah. me. <laughs> questions are getting harder and harder. Uh, Richie, I had a glance through your news round. I wouldn't have said there was anything yeah. like bumper, the people need to know this uh, type story. But if there was one more story that you want to bring people that caught your eye? Yeah, last year's Masters champion, Yan Bing Tao, has been suspended from the World Snooker Tour while allegations of match fixing against him are investigated. He's banned from all WPBSA events for with immediate effect over claims he manipulated matches for betting purposes. Yan, who has the right to appeal, is the sixth Chinese player under investigation. Lu Ning, Li Hang, Zhao Jianbo, Bai Lang Ning and Chang Bing Niu were all suspended last week while Yang Wenbo was banned back in October. WPBSA Chief Jason Ferguson told Eurosport today that the investigation is moving swiftly. We're a long way down the road with this investigation. Uh, Nigel Moore is very experienced in this. We have a team behind that that's very experienced. Um, we, we're constantly monitoring markets and everything else. We know what's going on. Um, any player that thinks they can get away with it, by the way, is completely foolish because we can we can find it easily. Um, it won't take as long as you think. I think we are, as like I say, quite well down the road. It is not a good look for us. But we are a sport that chooses to deal with it. We are a sport that chooses to put it out in the public domain. We will not have it talked about behind the scenes. Expose it, get it out there, deal with it, and we can move on with the professional sport that we've got. Okay. That is no nonsense, Rich, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, it's a huge story, given the profile of snooker in China in particular, and given the profile of these players. I mean, they're not cloggers they're not guys who are just you know there for you know opening rounds and then go home we're talking about tournament winners and people who can hang around into quarterfinals and beyond and um they'd be high profile back in china as well like it's a really really dark stain on the sport at the moment and considering that yan was supposed to be involved in the qualifier at the english open over in brentwood uh today uh, i was banned from taking part in that uh, others have been in action as well recently it's um it's not good it's okay. not good at all fellas we're at time to our Moroccan correspondent. Thank you very much. Nice and lads. Shop and round. Kenny Cunningham. Kenny is uh, coming at you in full between 9 and 10 on the football show. Are you going to stay for Kilban? 
10 more minutes. No, no, it's not. We'll just, you'll get, <laughs> your nose will be put out with joints. No, it won't. We'll be, we'll be loved up and you'll feel. No, no, no. no I, I want you and Kev to, I want to watch two football like men outside, talk. Which you are, which you are, <laughs> let's be honest. You're staying. Kenny Cunningham is staying with us. Kev Kilban is going to be on the line. We're going to do 15 minutes chat about the weekend, okay? There we go. Kenny Cunningham is staying with us. Right, that's the news round. All you need for Christmas. News Talk's Christmas Cash Machine. So we had a big win on Friday. It was Claire Condon today. She answered the call and 40,000 euro was won. And we're not stopping there. The cash